about our activities and stay tuned about our um, 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 next events. You can um, connect with us on our social channels on Facebook or LinkedIn and also um, follow us on our website. And uh, the uh, event of today is about uh, fabric reinforced semi ambitious matrix uh, systems. So we will start with the first uh, part of the webinar about the FRCM system in general. And then we will have another um, uh, intervention about uh, the sustainable uh, developments of new uh, next generation of, of FRCM systems. And then we will have the question and answer session. So um, please uh, put your questions in the chat during the, inter the speaker's intervention. And then we will answer at the end of the webinar uh, to all of your questions and we will have a bit of discussion. So the speakers of today are uh, Jacopo Donini and um, Giuseppe Ferrara. So Jacopo Donini uh, is currently an assistant professor at the University, uh, at Polytechnic University um, Marche, and he's um, um, interested in innovative construction materials and also structural performance and durability, and also field application. And is an expert in advanced composite systems such as FRCM and FRC systems. Um, while Giuseppe Ferrara is currently a postdoc at uh, um, um, Polytechnic of Turin and is an expert in uh, supplementary cementitious materials and also carbon capture, uh, utilization, and storage, and also uh, the use of inorganic composite materials for the retrofit of uh, structural systems. So um, we, I think we can start with the webinar. So please, Jacopo, you can start sharing your screen and the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Marta, for your kind introduction. And um, also thank to Phil Young for uh, inviting me to these events. And uh, so I will start my presentation. So today we are going to talk about uh, FRCM systems. And so um, in the first part of the webinar, I will try to um, setting the scene. So to introduce the, 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 the topic of FRCM system and uh, why it is important to, uh, to introduce the new strengthening systems in the, in the construction sector. Then I will talk uh, about FRCM, what are the advantages and the drawbacks of using this mm, technology. And then I will briefly talk about the regulatory framework, uh, the guidelines that uh, have been recently introduced and uh, their importance to, um, to expand the use of this material and to also facilitate the design of structural interventions with uh, FRCM. And then I will try to show you what are the complexities of uh, this uh, uh, material. And uh, so with a multi-scale uh, approach, and then just a few words on the durability issue. So we all know that um, one of the key objectives of the construction sector uh, today is uh, to rehabilitate and retrofit uh, the large number of masonry and concrete structures that are deteriorated or damaged due to the, the aging and also the, the need to, to seismic retrofitting concrete and masonry structures. And if we think that in Italy, for example, uh, more than 40% of uh, structures were built before the 60s. So we very need to uh, to introduce, uh, in this case, new strengthening systems uh, to make uh, our buildings safe and uh, to, uh, to uh, enlarge the, the, the life of, the, of the, our structures. And so these new strengthening systems should be mechanically effective, of course, cost effective, sustainable, and uh, if possible, also uh, durable. So in the last years, a um, lot of advanced centering systems have been introduced, such as FRP, which has been uh, introduced in the construction sector more than 20 years ago. 
and which is a organic based uh, fiber import polymer. So it is a, a system based on uh, epoxy resin that uh, it, it has been used and it is still used for strengthening of uh, concrete structures mainly. Then we also have uh, high performance uh, uh, reinforced concrete, uh, fiber reinforced concrete, which can be used for uh, um, also for uh, structural and for strengthening purposes. And then we have the family of um, fabric and inorganic based systems such as uh, CRM and FRTM, or even called TRM, which are the fabric reinforcing and tissues matrix or textile reinforced mortar that uh, will be the topic of, of this presentation. So what is this uh, FRCM? Well, the two um, key ingredients are the inorganic uh, matrix, uh, which can be a cement-based matrix or also a lime-based uh, mortar. And uh, so we are talking about a mortar, of a mortar, so we have a, a very small aggregate and uh, this uh, um, inorganic matrix is reinforced with different types of fabrics. And so here we can, you can see some pictures of the most used fabrics, uh, which are carbon, glass, PBO, basalt, and also steel um, fabrics, uh, which can be of different types, so unidirectional, bidirectional, and also natural fibers that uh, have been recently introduced in FRCM and that will be uh, then better described by, by Giuseppe in the second part of the webinar. So this system um, is applied externally to masonry and uh, concrete structure. So it works uh, uh, under tensile load and um, it has a thickness between five and uh, 15 millimeters. So, what are the advantages of using this uh, technology? Well, for sure, we have um, a good compatibility with the concrete or masonry structure substrates in terms of chemical, physical, and uh, mechanical properties. So uh, for example, with respect to FRP, we have a, a, a higher compatibility with the, with the substrate. And um, the installation is easy. So traditional plastering or trowel trays can be used. And so there is no particular, um, the, the, the operators, they don't need um, particular skills to apply this, this system. And, and it is also safe for applicators. It can be applied on damp substrates or wet substrates. So this is very important because uh, it is the the situation that we usually find in the, in, in, the, in the construction site. Then the system is also breathable. So uh, it allows air and moisture transportation through the metrics. And this is very important, especially for mesory structures. It has good performance at elevated temperatures. And if compared to FRP, for example, uh, because of course we don't have organic uh, polymers and um, and then finally, also, uh, we can talk of a sustainable material because uh, its application is uh, reversible. So we can apply also the material, for example, to, to strengthen historic structures. We have also some, let's say, drawbacks um, that are due to the intrinsic nature of the uh, constituent material. So we have. Uh, um, a mortar that, uh, of course, is brittle and it cracks when it is subjected to, to tensile uh, loads. And you can see here some of the tensile tests that we perform on FRCM coupons and also the, the behavior of the, the material of the FRCM when it is applied on mesory panel. We also have a, a, a huge variability of the mechanical properties because uh, we can have different fibers, different types of mortar, and uh, also the fabric can be different and the interspace between the yards can be different. So the, the mechanical properties of the materials uh, are very uh, different depending on the, on the constituent material. The most important uh, feature characteristics of this uh, technology of the FRCM is uh, the fact that the mortar is, um, is not able to fully penetrate 
within the single filaments of the reinforcement. This is because the, the particles of the mortar are too big to, to go through the filaments. And so this results in, um, let's say, um, not very good bond between the, the, the reinforcement and the, and the matrix. And um, so uh, then I will show you some uh, of the, um, what, what uh, has been done and what uh, the research is doing to trying to improve uh, the bond between the, the matrix and the, and the fibers. And finally, this material has been recently introduced in the, in the construction market. So we need the still uh, further research to, uh, to better address its mechanical characterization, for example, and also durability studies uh, that uh, are needed. So um, going to the regulatory framework, uh, I can say that uh, a lot has been done in recent years. So uh, recently have been published several uh, guidelines uh, such as, for example, the American ACI 549 and also the CNRDT 215 that are design guidelines. So they, they, they say how to design a structural intervention with this material. And then we also have uh, acceptance criteria and qualifications such as the AC 434, the American AC 434, and also an Italian guideline, guideline to uh, qualify the material, so they describe uh, the, the, the test that we have to do in order to characterize and to qualify uh, the FRCM system. And if we talk about the mechanical characterization of the material, this is quite a um, complex uh, um, topic because uh, the material is uh, heterogeneous, so uh, it's, it is not so easy to characterize it in order to uh, obtain the mechanical parameters then, uh, that we need then in, in the design formulation. So these are the two main, uh, let's say, set, test setup to characterize the FRCM system in intention. So we have the AC434, the American guidelines that um, provides um, a crevice grip anchor to, to grip the specimen and to test its intention. So in this case, the load is transferred to the fabric only through shear stresses uh, at the interface between this metal tab and the, and the inorganic mortar. So we do not apply compression forces at the ends of the, of the specimen. So in this case, um, we represent the, let's say, the real conditions on site because uh, uh, the, the fabric within the, the matrix is free to slip. And so we can also evaluate uh, what is very important, and that is the bond between the fabric and, and the mortar. While the RILEM Technical Committee 250 um, provided a, a different solution with a clamping grip. So in this case, uh, uh, there is pressure at the ends of the specimen, which is uh, put between the, the clamps of the tensile machine. And so in this case, we do not allow the fabric to slip within the mortar. So we have a complete characterization of the composite. And, um, and so uh, usually we have also the, the failure that is due to fabric breakage more than slippage. So depending on the, on the test setup, we also have different results in the tensile behavior of the, of the material. So uh, here I show you the, the different stress strain curves by adopting uh, uh, clevis uh, uh, anchorage. So in this case, we have a first part of the curve where the specimen is still uncracked. Then we have the formation of the first crack and then the formation of further cracks. In this case, the slope of the curve uh, uh, is lower. And then we have the, let's say, uh, the fabric is also involved and the, the slope of the second part of the curve is mainly due to the uh, adhesion that develops between the fabric and, and the mortar. 
In the case of clamping, uh, we have uh, the same behavior in the first part where the mortar is still uncracked. Then we have the formation of cracks uh, with the lower elastic modulus. And then the, the, the curve, uh, let's say, is uh, like if we are testing uh, only the, the, the internal bear reinforcement. So we have uh, the slope of the curve is very similar to the slope of the of uh, the, the, the fabric, which is uh, uh, between the, the, within the mortar. So these are the expected failure modes. So we can have the slippage of the fabric within the, the mortar. And this, is, this happens usually when we have a low adhesion between the fiber and the, and, and the mortar. But we can also have breakage of the, of the fabric. So another important test is the shear bond test. So in this case, we apply a, a strip of the FRCM to a substrate, which can be a mesory substrate uh, or concrete. And then we apply a, a, a shear load and we can have different failure modes. So the failure modes depend on the type of substrate and how we prepare the substrate and um, on the bond between the, the mortar and the, and the substrate. And uh, of course, on the Mm, on the bond between the fabric and the mortar. So in this case, we can have uh, the bonding uh, at the textile to matrix interface or fabric slippage within the mortar. Or we can also have the, the, the rupture of the, of the fabric. So um, CNR DT215 proposed um, a method to characterize FRCM system combining the, the two tests. So the, the shear bond test, with the shear bond test, we can determine the, 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 the tensile strength, the, the, the shear bond strength. And then we use the strength to, to evaluate uh, what is the, uh, the strain when we test the, the bare fabric. So we use the, the, sing, the single shear bond test to evaluate the sigma conventional uh, because we don't want the, the, the fabric uh, um, to delaminate from the substrate. Um, and we use the, the, um, the tensile test on the bare fabric to evaluate uh, the epsilon, so the strain of the fibers. And so by doing that, uh, we are sure that we are not uh, going to uh, delaminate the, the system from the substrate. And we use the, the epsilon from the tensile test on the bare fabric because it's easier to evaluate the, the strain on the bare fabric more than evaluate the, fa the, fa the strain on the, on the FRCM coupon. So the, um, if we look globally at the FRCM system, um, we can say that we have a complex and also a multi-scale behavior. So the, the mechanical behavior of the system depends on many parameters, such as the type of fibers that we are going to use. Um, so each yarn is composed of hundreds or thousand filaments. And then it depends, of course, on the tensile strength of, uh, of the, on the mechanical properties of the yarn, and also on the mechanical properties of the uh, mortar that we use. Then we can also evaluate what is the, the, the bond between the fabric and the mortar. And we can do that, uh, for example, with the pullout test and also with tensile test, of course. Then we can go to a larger scale. And so we can evaluate what is the bond of the system to different substrates. And we can do that, for example, with shear bond test or with pull off test. And finally, we have to evaluate the behavior of the, of the system when it is applied on structural elements. So this is very complex. And, uh, and uh, now I will show you um, what is, uh, in my opinion, the most important thing on FRCM system. And that um, is the fact that the mechanical effectiveness of FRCM is strongly dependent on the on the ability of the matrix to wet the dry fiber yards. So of course the bond strength that developed at the interface between the yard and, and the mortar is a key factor and uh, that um, 
then uh, the, 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 the mechanical behavior of the composite is strongly dependent, of course, on the bond between the yard and, and the mortar. So uh, the yards are usually dry, so the, the filaments are uh, bonded to the mortar only uh, on the external part of the, of the yard. So the penetration of the matrix between the filaments is not possible because of the dimensions of the particle. And so only the external filaments are bonded to the matrix, while the inner filaments are free to sleep with the, uh, what is called this telescopic behavior. And so the, the stress within the, the yarn is not uniform. So we have a higher stress on the sleeve filaments while the inner filaments are free to sleep uh, with the very low friction. These are the two extreme cases. So when we are dry uh, fabric or when we impregnate the fabric with, uh, for example, with a polymer, which can be epoxy, for example. So in this case, the, we, the, we have a more uniform stress distribution between the filaments because they cannot sleep uh, between each, each other. So uh, in this case, uh, we have a uniform stress distribution. And uh, uh, of course, uh, in this case, it's very important the adhesion that uh, uh, develops between the, the coating and, uh, and the inorganic matrix. So in the last years, uh, it has been a lot of, of attention in improving what is the bond at the fibers to mortar interface. And uh, we can do that, uh, for example, by modifying the, the mortar composition by adding, uh, for example, organic polymers. Or we can do that by improving uh, the, the surface of the fabrics, for example, with uh, organic coatings which can be epoxy resin, but also styrene butadiene copolymer, polyvinyl alcohol, and so on. So this is the easiest way of, uh, uh, of improving the surface of the fabric. So by doing that, we are uh, um, adding a material, which is a polymer, uh, which suffers the, the high temperature. So, uh, we are creating for um, practically uh, an FRP within uh, a, an inorganic uh, mortar. So of course the, the, effectiveness, the effectiveness depends on the mechanical properties of the, of the coating, on its uh, rheological properties, and also on the application method. So we can apply the coating uh, and the mortar. Um, we can apply the mortar on the fresh coating or uh, uh, or when it is already uh, hardened. So in this case, the composite becomes more sensitive to high temperatures, of course, and also the fabric reinforcement becomes stiffer. So it is more difficult, for example, to apply the system on curved surface. In the last years, also inorganic coatings have been developed, such as uh, cement in polymer dispersion, silica particles, inorganic powders. And in this case, we have an improvement of the chemical interaction between the inorganic matrix and the, and the fibers. So um, in this case, we have also a higher resistance to high temperatures, uh, even if there are still no uh, many studies on this topic. Of course, the manufacturing process is uh, more difficult and so we need further implementation. Here I show you some experimental tests that we carried out at our university on dry and epoxy pre-impregnated carbon yarn. So we perform this uh, pull-out test on single yarns and you can see the, the very different behavior uh, of dry and coated yarn. So in the case of dry yarns, we have an elastic behavior up to, up to failure, which is brittle. So we have the, the failure of the external filaments of the yarn. While in the case of uh, coated pre-impregnated carbon yarns, we have a higher peak load. And then we have the detachment of the, of the yarn from the mortar. 
But in this case, we have a very high friction between the external surface of the coating and, and the mortar. So here we can see also from the same images, what is the bond between the, the dry yard and the mortar. So the inner filaments can slip while only few filaments are bonded to the mortar. While in the case of coated yarn, we have uh, uh, the delamination at the interface between the yarn and the mortar. And uh, however, the, the frictional forces that develop at the interface are quite high. And so we have this uh, plateau on the, on the curve. These are other results on uh, tensile tests that we perform uh, on the same fabrics, so on the dry carbon fabrics. And then we, uh, we use also um, a light pre-impregnation up to a full pre-impregnation with epoxy. And here you can see the stress strain curves of the FRCM when subjected to tensile stresses. So in the case of dry fabrics, uh, we have uh, a, a softening behavior of the, after the first crack. While by increasing the level of pre-impregnation, we have uh, the, the, the shift to a uh, strain hardening behavior for uh, medium and for full impregnated yarn. So here you can see the, the same uh, of the section. So in the case of dry yards, we have a very bad uh, interface between the dry filaments and the mortar, while uh, for the full pre-impregnated yarn, we have uh, uh, higher quality of the interface, which allows us to, to reach this, uh, uh, this uh, behavior with higher tensile load. And these are the failure modes. So in the case of dry yarns, we have the, the slippage of the internal fabrics within the, the mortar, while in the case of coated yarn, uh, this is the, the full pre-impregnated yarn, we, have, we reach the, the failure due to breakage of the internal reinforcement. So uh, I wanna say just a few words on what is the, the durability of FRCM system. And uh, these are some uh, results from the literature, so from Scopus. We can see that uh, we have uh, a lot of papers on FRCM or TRM, while we have very few, uh, about 10%, on the FRCM and TRM durability. So this is because of course, um, as engineers, we first want to, to evaluate the mechanical properties of, of the system. And then we, we, we worry about uh, what is the, the long-term behavior and durability. So for, for sure there is a, a, a needing for further investigations on durability. So in order to evaluate what is the behavior of the system when exposed to aggressive environments. And uh, on this topic, uh, uh, a RELEM, RELEM Technical Committee 219 has, uh, has been set up. And so uh, in the future, we will have uh, uh, more results regarding the durability of, of these systems. So this is not a simple task because uh, as I show you, the mechanical properties of the system depend on many aspects such as uh, the type of substrate that we are going to reinforce, uh, this, the, the interface between the FRCM and the substrate, the, the properties of the constituent material such as the inorganic matrix and the, and the, and the, and the fabric, and the interface between the, the fabric and the mortar, and also, of course, the single filaments that constitute the, the, the fabric. So this is not a simple task and there is a lot of work to do in order to, um, let's say, have a standardization of uh, what is the evaluation of the durability of these systems. So I want to conclude my, my presentation with some observation. The first one I got from one of my mentors, Tony Nanni, which say that FRCM is nowadays a, a new tool in the concrete and measure repair toolbox. So we can, even if I didn't show in this presentation the, the, effective, the effectiveness of the system when applied to structures, this is a system that is very effective. And then 
also the the fact that uh, recent uh, guidelines have been issued this allowed to qualify a FRCM system and give us important information on how to design reinforcement with this material. Of course, there are future challenges such as the durability issue, uh, the knowledge of the tra stress transfer mechanism, uh, so with further experimental, analytical, and numerical studies. Then we also have the introduction of, of new materials in FRCN systems, such as geopolymeric matrix and natural fibers, and design of connectors that uh, have not been addressed in this, uh, in this presentation, and also, of course, the validation of current design protocols that need um, further studies and uh, more time to be addressed. So thank you for your attention. And uh, I leave the, the, the screen to, to Giuseppe for the, the second part of the, of the webinar. Thank you. So uh, thank you, uh, Jacob, for giving me the, the word. So um, I'm going to present um, the second part of the webinar in which I'll um, talk about the sustainable development in uh, um, uh, FR um, uh, CM uh, application. So uh, I will, uh, uh, well, okay. I will uh, first um, introduce the topic by talking about um, the, the, this, uh, the sustainable development, so the importance of sustainability in, in uh, civil engineering uh, uh, constructions and material for constructions. I will talk about plant fibers that has a key role in this, um, in this framework. Uh, and I will pass about some mechanical aspect of the so-called sustainable FRCMs as some solution to improve their mechanical behavior. Um, I was, uh, I'd like to start this webinar by giving a, a definition of a sustainable development. Uh, our common future, the uh, Brandon report of 1987, it gave the first uh, um, definitions uh, of this aspect by saying humanity has the ability to make development sustainable to ensure that it meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their needs. This definition is very important because this concept, on this concept is based uh, every um, plan of development of um, our modern society. For example, if you look at the multi-annual financial framework uh, of the next six years of the European Union, so the next generation EU, we can see that 30% of the economic resources are based on uh, uh, natural resource and environment aspect, specific, specific European Union aims at reaching the ambitious target of at least 30% of its expenditure contributing to climate objectives. So we can see this as a very key um, aspect uh, in every actually in every field of our society. And of course, to, to achieve this uh, ambitious goal, we have to make reference to life cycle assessment uh, principles. Uh, and so to take into account our product's full life cycle from the extraction of resources through production, use, and recycling up to the disposal of remaining waste. And so uh, we can, um, <clears throat> by means of life cycle assessment procedure, we can control carbon and water footprints. Uh, we can preserve the ecosystem quality. Uh, we can uh, responsibly use natural resources and of course, uh, take care of the human health. In this framework, if you look at uh, construction materials or materials in general, plant fibers, play an important role. In fact, if you look at the so-called biocomposites um, that are uh, material formed by matrix, mainly by resin and a reinforcement of natural fibers, usually derived from plant fibers, 
we can see that this beer composite uh, have a very interesting market. Actually, that is uh, um, that is significantly increasing, and his trend is uh, is uh, is really promised to increase uh, much faster in the next years all over in the world. And if you look at the biocomposite markets um, uh, at the moment, so their application in several uh, uh, fields, economic fields, we can see, for example, in transportation, they are uh, used, uh, are largely used, but also 24% of biocomposites market is devoted to application in construction. So it's actually our uh, um, responsibility to see uh, to promote uh, this uh, um, as uh, better as we can the use of these sustainable systems in uh, construction materials. But when we talk about sustainability, how can we quantify this aspect actually? If you look at this uh, graph, it's a very interesting graph in which we have several uh, construction materials from metals, polymers, up to uh, composites or green composites, for example. Uh, and we have uh, uh, a parameter that is related to the tensile strength of these materials and the parameter that is referred to the embodied energy that is actually related to the um, carbon footprint of the materials we are considering. Well, if you look at this system, uh, this is very um, interesting because uh, uh, based on a, uh, on a single material, uh, we can uh, make a relationship its strength and its um, carbon footprint. And so if we compare material that, uh, with the same strength, we can see some interesting results. For instance, if we look at this point and this point, uh, respectively uh, referring to a, a green composite, so basically a biocomposite with, uh, based on uh, raising matrix and, and plant fiber, and um, and uh, okay, I was thinking about this. And if you look at, for example, this system or or others that are basically uh, um, traditional composite, we can see even though if we have a comparable strength, we have a much difference. We have a, a great difference in terms of embodied energy. In absolute terms, in this specific case, we could also see that the embodied production energy concerning synthetic fiber-based composites is approximately 10 times larger than that of plant fiber-based ones. Of course, this is a, a real general uh, chart and each case should be uh, analyzed specifically, but it gives us an idea of how it is important to focus attention of sustainable solutions in order to achieve the targets of um, uh, climate um, changing and the climate, uh, fixing the climate problem of our society nowadays. So the use of plant fibers, it's a very interesting uh, um, um, it's a very interesting solution in this sense. Plant fibers, the most used plant fibers are mainly jute, sisal, hemp, flax, coir, and kurawa. You can find here a large, the, a large set of plant fibers mainly used nowadays. If we focus on their uh, main strength, and for example, if we look at flax and hemp that are among the most uh, uh, resistant flax, uh, plant fiber and compare with traditional aramid carbon uh, rather than glass or, or steel fibers, we can see that we have comparable strength even though we have to say that this um, 1,000 or 2,000 megapascal strength uh, reported in this table, they're, um, um, I don't know how they are realistic because sometimes uh, these tests are referred to single filaments while when, when we are using these fibers within, the, within uh, composites, we are using entire threads. So the strength is a little bit uh, lower, but it still it gives us idea of how promising is the use of these fibers in biocomposites. And if you look at some data in 2010, the use of plant fibers in composites represented about 13% of all types of reinforced fibers, and it was estimated to double in the next decade. So it is a market market that is increasing um, more and more. And if we look at the production in the world of plant fiber, this is, uh, these are some data referring to the kilotons uh, of plant fiber produced all around in the world. We can of course see that uh, a large part of the production is concentrated in the Southeast Asia, so China, mainly China and India, uh, as well as in Brazil. But what is can be surprised, uh, and not all the people know this aspect, is that uh, most, uh, a lot of, uh, a big production of plant fibers is also in Europe. And if you look, for example, flex fibers, uh, we can see that the most part of flex fibers are produced in uh, Europe, as well as uh, hemp fiber. So it is a very promising market also in our continent. 
This is the reason why also in the, um, uh, giving the, the success of uh, fiber reinforced cementitious matter composite, uh, sci the scientific community starts to uh, wonder if the use of these uh, natural fibers can be also suitable in, in this kind of application. So we have several uh, research uh, studies focused on the, on the use of plant fiber in FRCMs with the classical uh, um, qualification tests, so tensile tests, in line with what has already been done with traditional FRCMs and uh, also application on Mesony to see the efficiency on a larger scale of these composites. For example, if we look at this, gra uh, this graph that is um, um, referring to a recent publication, which uh, um, over a, a database of uh, more or less 80 uh, uh, was reinforced with FRCMs. The goal of the paper was to show the efficiency of different uh, FRCM system strengthening of masonry elements. We can see that uh, the six percent of uh, the walls of the database is made of um, it's made of uh, plants fiber. So we can see that actually uh, the, the, it is really a promising sector, and uh, the attention on this sector is increasing more and more. When we talk about sustainable FRCMs, we have to focus the attention parallelly on two aspects. On one side, on one hand, we have to focus on the mechanical behavior, so the classical qualification of the composite system and the check of the efficiency of the system as reinforcement of mass or in general or uh, uh, of structures. On the other side, we cannot uh, neglect the aspect of the durability. That means the to verify the preservation of the mechanical properties of the composite in the time with specific attention uh, to degradation phenomena of plant fibers because once embedded in organic matrix, they suffer um, a significant, um, significant degradation phenomena. Uh, so if we check, uh, if you look at the mechanical uh, behavior, um, Several studies focus on the, uh, the attention on the on the flex uh, on the on the tensile test of uh, natural uh, FRCMs as well as uh, shear bond test. Um, in this sense, we have to focus the attention of the composite implementation because it's not uh, as easy as uh, it is with traditional composite because uh, normally you have this. Uh, Texture that is uh, really flexible. And so the installation is quite um, a critical aspect because we have to guarantee the texture to be as tight as possible uh, in order to, to, to have a proper, um, <clears throat> to work properly with the metrics. And so we also have to take attention in, uh, in uh, pressing the, the, in pressing the, 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 the textile over the matter in order to guarantee a correct penetration of the textile within the mortar. Uh, before introducing the sustainable uh, FRCM mechanical behavior, I will just uh, quickly uh, spend a few words about the tensile response of the natural fibers in general. Here we have a stress strain response of a flex textile test and intention. It is actually a quite linear response up to the rupture of the textile, but what we can observe is that when we have lower strain levels, we have a kind of uh, lower stiffness of the system. This is due, of course, to the arrangement of the text that is made by several threads and uh, in their turn they are made by several filaments, not always uh, working all together and contributing in the same way to the strength of the system, but also on a nanoscopic scale, all the, 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 the parts that are called the walls of the single filaments are not oriented really on the tensile uh, direction uh, of the of the of the threads of the filaments generating this kind of lower stiffness and lower strains. This is a significant aspect because uh, significantly influences the overall mechanical behavior of the composites. So uh, talking about the overall mechanical behavior of the composite, here we have a typical test string response of a conventional FRCM in which we have the classical three-stage <coughs> behavior. If we compare a typical tensile response of natural FRCMs, we can see there are some analogies, similitudes, we can say, between the two types of responses. But we also can observe that we have large deformability in the second stage, and we have a significant drops of the loads. These aspects are mainly due to the matrix to textile bond properties, to a not proper stretching of the textile during the installation, and to the typical tensile response of the 
of the flex uh, text. And in fact, if we look at the tensor response of the dry text cell, we can see that the overall response full of this kind of uh, response of the of the text. So, of course, we can see that in order to have a mechanical behavior that it um, can tend to be uh, similar to the traditional one, we have to do something to improve these materials. And this is mainly what I've been seen in literature by observing several studies in which also, for example, either by using sisal, sisal flux, or, or as well as other types of materials, and also by increasing the, the textile amount within the mortar, the response is always the same. Uh, I would like to focus the attention on this, <clears throat> on this work where actually uh, <clears throat> we can see the hardening phase of the system starts a uh, lower uh, strain values. This is because actually during the implementation, installation of the, of the composite, um, uh, a, uh, a treatment of the fabrics has been, uh, it's been uh, <clears throat> applied in order to make stiffer, stiffer the textile and to increase the adherence with the more, the, between the mortar and the textile. And also particular attention has been um, done uh, to the tightening of the textile during the implementation. So we can see that <clears throat> there are some strategies that we can uh, apply to improve um, the properties of this, this family of materials. Another crucial aspect, as I was saying before, is durability. Actually, plant fibers, uh, <clears throat> say durability aspect properties, as also <clears throat> Jacopo was saying before, they are specifically critical for all types of materials and FRCMs. But in case of plant fibers, we have to know that once they are imbibed in cement or lime-based matrices, they undergo to a severe uh, degradation process due to alkaline, alkaline attack. I wouldn't go too much in detail on this aspect, but <clears throat> we have to know that chemically, plant fiber are made of lignin, hemicellulose, and cellulose. And the cellulose is the part that <clears throat> confers to the fibers the mechanical uh, resistance. Well, when we um, put this kind of fibers in an alkaline environment, so, so, such as the one of cement or lime-based uh, matrix, we have at first the degradation of the lignin, the external part. So this degradation, uh, mm, proceed and, and uh, uh, advance inner inner within the filaments uh, up to achieving the degradation of the cellulose. In this case, we have a complete degradation of the materials. And we have several experimental evidences about this aspect in which actually, for example, in this case, by aging uh, flex fibers in a, a cement based or lime based materials, we have a completely degradation, a complete degradation of the, of the fibers, um, as well as there are some other studies in which it was shown that this degradation is particularly severe with um, also with lime based mortar and by modifying sometimes the mortar, we can somehow improve this aspect. Um, and also we have some problems at the interface between fibers and matrix due to the uh, variation of the volume of the fibers due to uh, absorption of the water. So it exists some fiber treatments to improve this durability aspect. For example, alkaline tri treatment, uh, wet drying cycles that are pretty effective both for uh, uh, improving the strength and durability aspect and polymer impregnation, especially the, la the last one. It's uh, very important because it can create an isolation of the fibers from the matrix. At the same time, it can also improve the, the, the adherence between the two materials and also the stiffness of the fibers. So I would like to uh, show in the last part of my presentation, uh, some uh, uh, works have been done um, in the last years um, aiming to see if um, in how the mechanical response of natural FRCMs can be improved by implementing some textile treatments or matrix mix design modification. Basically, uh, what I've done is uh, I have, um, uh, by studying a compost, a compost made of lime mortar and flex textile, I've analyzed uh, an impregnation treatment of the textile in, by using sterile booted and polymer coating and, uh, and also by bonifying, the, improving the, the matrix by adding short fibers. In this case, I added short Kurawa fibers just to stay in line with uh, the sustainability aspect of the research. The short fibers themselves, they were 20 millimeter long. They were treated by ornification and uh, chemical treatments. And in this case, we, have, we had a content equal to 1% weight of the fresh mortar. 
Well, if we go uh, um, quickly on the results of this research, we can see various re uh, promising results. So we have basically three series of specimens, the reference one with flex textile, non-impregnated flex textile. We have a series with in, in which impregnated flex textile have been adopted, a third series in which uh, both impregnated textile and short fibers within the mortar have been used. The three series of specimens were characterized by two layers of flex textile. If we look at the stress strain response of a representative specimen of each uh, of each um, of each uh, space of each series, this is what we have already seen for the reference non impregnated series uh, before. We also have a crack pattern uh, on the on the right side. This is a representative specimen of a series in which impregnated fibers were adopted, and this is a representative response of a specimens characterized by impregnated fiber as short uh, fibers. Of course, we can see that uh, <clears throat> the crack pattern on the impregnated specimens is much denser than the one exhibited by non-impregnated specimen. And if you look, for example, at the, in terms of strains, there's a very uh, significant aspect also in view of application of structural elements. The impregnated flex uh, uh, confers to the <clears throat> to the system a higher, um, a, a better uh, mechanical response by reducing significantly the <clears throat> the this uh, deformability. And also, if you look at the drops of the load due to the opening of the of the of the cracks. This is much lower with respect to the reference series. And also, if we compare, once we increase the, 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 the strength, the tensile strength of the, of the mortar by adding short fibers, we also increase the, the, the normal stress in this, in this phase of the, of, the, of the composite. If we look, uh, lastly, um, for example, the results in terms of crack openings, it is a very significant uh, aspect in terms of uh, durability, also performance of the system. If we, if we fix our attention on one strain, we can see that non-impregnated textile adds some values of uh, crack width. When we impregnate, uh, when we use impregnated textile, we reduce, significantly reduce the crack openings and we even uh, in, uh, have a beneficial effect when we use also um, more uh, resistant matrix. For those who are interested <coughs> to more information about this aspect, uh, uh, you can have more information on my PhD thesis that has been recently published on a Springer, um, um, a Springer. Um, so basically we have shown that by means of uh, impregnation of cooler flowers, of course we can improve, uh, we have an overall improvement of the tensile response of the system by increasing the flexural strength and reducing uh, the, the crack openings with a denser crack pattern. So to conclude, the use of plant fibers in organic matrix uh, composites is an efficient solution to reduce the environmental footprint of the reinforcing system, and it meets, uh, fully meets the actual trend of the market characterized by a significant increase in the production of natural fibers <coughs> and in general natural resources, uh, sustainable um, resources. Sustainable FRCMs are characterized by a promising mechanical response <clears throat> in, terms of in terms of tensile strength in view of application as an enforcement of structural elements. However, we also show that some critical aspects emerged from scientific experimental research, uh, mainly consisting in a significant de deformability of the composite and strong sensitivity with respect to degradation phenomena. Uh, we do can develop some improving techniques, for example, by textile treatments or matrix mix design modification to enhance the overall mechanical behavior of the system by reducing its deformability and fostering a more suitable crack pattern. And finally, I would say as a perspective, the entire scientific community is now devoted to a definition of textile treatments to improve both mechanical behavior and durability aspect in order to make natural FRCMs an enforcement system suitable for civil engineer application. Here you can see some references I started during the presentation. Thank you all for your kind attention and I will be glad to answer uh, some eventual question. Uh, Marta, you have to uh, you have to activate the um, 
the microphone. Apologies. <laughs> thank you. So thank you, uh, both of you, Jacopo and Giuseppe, for your uh, very clear and interesting uh, presentation about the systems and also current innovations about uh, yes, the introduction of these natural fibers for sustainable uh, retrofit solution of, um, of structures. So if you have uh, any kind of question for the speakers, please, you can uh, write them in the chat. Meanwhile, I will ask you something. So uh, about the application of these uh, systems, do you have any kind of concerns? So there are several guidelines today about the uh, design of such kind of intervention, intervention and there are several uh, positive aspects of using FRCM for retrofitting existing structures, especially metal buildings. Um, in your opinion, there is also some uh, rollback uh, that needs to be further investigated uh, or some limitation of these techniques that uh, avoid their use for the um, seismic or other kind of rehabilitation of existing structures. So I, I can say something maybe. And um, so of course, uh, um, the these uh, design guidelines are quite recent. So especially the guideline for from CNR, it needs uh, for sure forest studies and experimental studies to, to evaluate uh, the, the, analytic, the analytical predictions that we have with these guidelines. And um, so as I said in the presentation, this system can be very different depending, uh, for example, on the fabric that we use. So if we use glass, carbon or steel, we have different filler modes. And so it is, uh, let's say, not easy to, to have a general, uh, um, let's say, uh, results from the, from, the, from the characterization. So for sure, these guidelines help very much to to have uh, to 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 use these materials, but we still have to do some studies for uh, for the characterization of the material and also for the for the durability issue. Thank you, Giuseppe. Do you want to add something about this? I know, but I I basically agree with the answer of um, Jacopo. Perfect. Okay, we have another question in the chat. So um, thank you from Masus Gamari. Uh, is there any material model for FSCMs to be used in software if you want to model the retrofitted structure? So we need a model for the material. Are you aware of any kind of model to be adopted for the composite system? Well, uh, for what I know, there are some uh, models uh, for example, from the producers of uh, FRCM. However, these models are, uh, let's say, not so advanced because as I showed, the, the behavior of the system is very complex. So if we have, for example, dry fibers, we have certain behavior. If we have coated fabrics, we have another behavior. So there is something that, uh, of course, maybe the, the last softwares are based on the, on the recent guidelines, so they can help us in design, uh, strengthen intervention with these uh, materials. Uh, but if we, if we need uh, uh, an advanced numerical software, for example, uh, I, I think that uh, even in this case, we have uh, still work to do. Okay, perfect. Uh, I don't see any other question in the chat. So um, I think we can also uh, close here the webinar. Otherwise, uh, yeah, we can wait a few minutes for other questions. Um, Meanwhile, I will ask you another question uh, to Giuseppe about the use of natural fibers uh, in the case of fire. Do you have any kind of issues in that case or uh, protective systems or I don't know, for explosions or other kind of um, unexpected impact loads or yeah, eating? Yes, okay, thank you for your question. In a, a, at my knowledge, I don't know if there are some studies about uh, the specific uh, 
performance of these uh, systems while uh, at high temperatures of uh, or exposed under some um, other um, <clears throat> critical uh, condition, as you said. Uh, of course, it is an aspect of um, fundamental um, importance. This kind of materials, the advantage of FRCM composites uh, is that the normally cementitious um, mortars compared to some other, let's say, uh, materials as, uh, as a steel or, 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 or a wood should respond in, uh, let's say, better, I should protect the fibers in this sense, or delay a little bit uh, the degradation of the fibers. But uh, well, there are some studies on uh, FRCMs in general and the protection of the fibers, for example, carbon fibers and so on by specific coatings. I think the same kind of um, studies has to be developed with natural fibers if we really want to make uh, suitable this kind of fibers for uh, actual applications. The attention now is more focused on the mechanical behavior because we have some uh, drawbacks in this aspect. We are a little bit late with respect to other uh, conventional FRCM. So uh, of course, research is needed on this aspect. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so there's another question in the chat. Um, yes, so this is not a technical question, but yes, the, um, the webinar is recorded. And so uh, the, the recording will be available on YouTube. So I don't think uh, if I don't know if the authors want to share the presentation directly, but you can consult the uh, the video on our YouTube channel that will be available I think in a couple of weeks. Okay, we have also another question uh, from Simona Bianchi. So when applied as retrofit system to mercury or concrete structures, are these solution cost effective? Uh, I don't know. I go first. Mm -hmm. uh, um, well, uh, these systems, in my opinion, are mm, very effective in the case of strengthening of uh, mesory structures. And um, while, for example, for concrete structures, they are also effective, but in this case, we can also use other techniques. So in the case of uh, mesory, these systems are effective. And uh, of course, it also depends on the quality of the mesory that we are going to, to strengthen. So in some cases, the solution can be effective, while in other cases, uh, we can have to, to do some other, uh, we have to, to look for other solutions. And cost effective, I think, yes, because um, the system is, is quite uh, cheap because we are using uh, an inorganic matrix and uh, if we use, for example, glass fibers, this is a, a, a very cheap material. So I think that uh, the, the solution is, is for sure uh, cost effective. Also, if I can add just something, uh, it is quite an emerging uh, um, retrofitting solution, but it is, I mean, the first, uh, the first studies on it, uh, it dates like less than 15 years ago, and it is already uh, widely used in, uh, in several applications nowadays. So it really, it really seems to be convenient also on the, on the, uh, on the economic uh, side. Otherwise, it wouldn't be so su successful, in my opinion. Totally agree. Okay. Of course, it depends on the kind of intervention. So there are uh, um, structural needs that FRCM cannot um, comply. So yes. the systems are able to, study to uh, improve some specific uh, requirements, but are not useful for everything. So it depends on the kind of intervention that you want to use uh, or you want to, you need to do, basically. Okay. So. Um, I think we don't have any other questions. So I want to thank you very much, both of you, for your uh, time and efforts and very, very clear presentations today. And thank us also to the audience for the interesting, uh, for the, the presence here today with us and also for the interesting questions. And hope to see you soon uh, in our next events. So thank you very much. Have a good afternoon and stay safe. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.